abstract this morning uh, deals with the development of a new prognostic tool for patients diagnosed with ductal carcinoma in situ. Like the treatment that we just heard for patients with invasive disease, patients with ductal carcinoma in situ generally undergo either mastectomy or a lumpectomy followed by radiation. However, as, as mammograms pick up more and more ductal carcinoma in situ, there has been a question whether all patients diagnosed with this disease require such invasive therapies. Um, especially in regards to the radiation. And several reports in the past have tried to detect a group of patients who have a low enough risk of an in-breast recurrence that radiation could be omitted. So far, we have not been able to identify clinical characteristics uh, of patients who are at low enough risk of recurrence that they can avoid radiation. But here today to discuss their work on their topic on this topic is Dr. Lawrence Solon, the chair of the radiation uh, Oncology Department at the Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. Dr. Sell. Thank you. It's a uh, privilege to present this. I present this on behalf of my colleagues um, from the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, the NCCTG, and of course, Genomic Health. And as we just heard, DCIS is a very common clinical presentation and rising with screening mammography. Um, DCIS, as you all know, is an early uh, stage zero or non-invasive uh, cancer which is confined to the milk ducts. And we have about 45,000 new cases yearly in the United States, so it's a very common problem. It typically presents in the asymptomatic patient on screening mammography. Unfortunately, most patients can undergo breast conservation surgery, however, we know from randomized clinical trials that radiation tamoxifen reduce risk, but they have not been shown to increase survival. And we also know that reliable methods to select treatment for surgery alone without adjuvant therapies have not been established using conventional clinical and pathologic factors in a reproducible fashion. So to move forward, we looked at ECOG E5194, which is a prospective multicenter study coordinated by the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group for patients who were low risk as defined on clinical and pathologic criteria with either lower intermediate grade DCIS with tumors up to two and a half centimeters or high grade DCIS with tumors up to one centimeter. On, on study, the treatment was defined as follows. All patients had breast conservation surgery, sometimes called a lumpectomy, a wide negative margin. Importantly, no radiation was allowed for these patients and later in the study, tamoxifen was optional. We then looked at patient outcomes as local recurrence, um, which is either DCIS or invasive cancer in the same breast. Normally, or many studies rather, would call this local recurrence, and some studies would also call this an insulateral breast event or an IBE, and IBE is the term we use in this report. To move the field forward, we then defined a new 12 gene DCIS score and performed a validation study, which is reported today. The pre specified study objectives were to determine if this new DCIS score predicts the risk of an ipsilateral breast event or local recurrence in the treated breast, and to determine whether the DCIS score provides value beyond standard clinical and pathologic factors. In other words, if we can do something better than what we've had before. The Oncotype DX21 gene assay was performed, and this is the 21 gene assay that has been reported many, many times for invasive cancers and has been published many times and is very reproducible. We use the standardized methodology and then we calculate our new DCIS score based on a subset of 12 genes. The patients that we looked at had predominantly favorable characteristics. They were predominantly postmenopausal, small tumors up to a centimeter in 80% of the cases, 29% had tamoxifen, and they were largely ER positive based on RT-PCR methodology. This slide shows the DCIS score and the ipsilateral breast events according to the three pre-specified risk groups of low, intermediate, and high. On the left panel, you can see that local recurrence is very nicely um, stratified according to low and blue, green and intermediate, and red and high, showing a very high differentiation based on the new DCIS score with the log rank p-value of 0.02. On the right, we did a similar analysis restricted to invasive local recurrences. And again, we find a very nice gradient between low, intermediate, and high with a log rank p-value of 0.01. So in summary, the DCIS score is a very significant, very strong predictor of local recurrence or invasive local recurrence. And of importance, about three quarters of the patients are found to be in the low risk group, which is actually good because that means they're at very low risk for local recurrence and invasive local recurrence. 
We can further use this data to define a continuous DCIS score on the x-axis to predict the 10-year risk of an ipsilateral breast event. And so on the left, what we see is the curve for DCIS score with the x-axis, and we can then use this to calculate the 10-year risk for an individual patient on the y-axis. And again, we can do the same for invasive local recurrences on the right. These are both, of course, statistically significant. Now, the way this is going to work in clinical practice is we take an individual tumor for an individual patient, we send it, it gets analyzed, a DCS score gets calculated for that specific patient, and then we use that information to predict that patient's risk of local recurrence and invasive local recurrence. So this is an example of a tumor for um, a patient who might have a low-risk DCIS score of 23, and we can use these curves to then predict her individual risk of local recurrence and invasive local recurrence, which makes the identification of adjuvant therapies more individualized and tailored and the discussions more individualized and tailored between the physician and the individual patient. And so in summary, the 12 gene DCIS score, um, first, the present study is a validation study and validates the DCIS score as a predictor of ipsilateral breast events and invasive local recurrences as well. Second, we can use this DCIS score to quantify the individual patient's 10-year risk of an ipsilateral breast event. And importantly, this DCIS score provides independent information of IBE risk beyond clinical and pathologic factors, which is very important because we're not just reinventing the wheel. And so in summary, we can use this DCIS score to provide a new clinical tool to guide individualized and tailored treatment selections for our patients with newly diagnosed DCIS of the breast. Thank you.